China has been actively shaking off US debt and instead diversifying into other currencies and gold. They have lost their top spot to Japan as their ferocious appetite for anything with yield has kept the US monopoly going. The petrodollar and the insatiable hunger for consumption has maintained their unstable system we are dealing with right now. We're in for a wild one. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we are going to look at what is going on in China. I'm going to talk about Argentina and Europe. So there's a lot going on in this video today. And I wanted to begin with what's happening with the major foreign holders of treasury securities. This is something I cover every single month, and I'm just giving you an update here. In that previous video, I suggested that Japan would actually overtake China, which, by the way, is not the first time that this has occurred. And it would be a matter of time. It happened a lot sooner than I thought it would. You can see that Japan bought more and China let more go. I'm going to show you a chart form in just a second, but here you can see the latest detail that is available. This is June 2019's numbers. If you look down at the very bottom, August 15th, 2019, that's when they released this information, but the actual data is June 2019. If you go down this list here, you're going to see the other names. Okay, we've gone through this before, but if you want to check this out on a deeper level, you have to look at the major foreign holders of treasury securities. If you are grabbing this information from the mainstream media, they might mention what happened with Japan and China. If you're lucky, you're going to see that, but you're not going to go into all of these other countries that I believe are actually significant, especially when you take a look at how many of these countries are most likely just shells for corporations or for other countries entirely. Now, we don't necessarily know, but big names on this list, Ireland, Switzerland, Luxembourg, Cayman Islands, Hong Kong, Belgium, the list goes on. We know that certain countries are buying more US debt month after month after month. Saudi Arabia being that, there's no doubt about it. Sure, there are fluctuations, but in general, you just see that trend happening over and over and over again. They have this insatiable appetite for US debt, no matter where you look around the world. Now, I wanted to say something very clear, as I always do when I bring up this video, China still holds $1.1 trillion worth of US debt. That's an insane amount. We are talking about a level that has been accumulating over a long period of time. They're not going to sell tomorrow. They're not going to eliminate all of that which they have at this moment. But of course, they can slowly but surely start to unwind this and they've been doing so for quite a while we've been noting that they've been diversifying out we'll see what the future has in store perhaps this is all part of the currency games that are being played right now here you can see the chart form U.S. Treasury securities for China and Japan the red line is China green Japan and this happened a couple times before 2016 and 2017 we saw these crossing over so I just wanted to make that very clear and it's happening yet again we don't necessarily know what is going to occur in the future but it seems like this is a very typical pattern if you actually look at what China has done over the past few years, other than this massive dip that did occur, the trend has clearly been down. They've been selling off treasuries after peaking out over $1.3 trillion worth. They have been eliminating that. I talk about this all the time. I know that you've heard me say it so many times before, but just wanted to make that very clear here. Looking at Japan's holdings of US treasuries specifically now, obviously they have been buying more and more in the last few months basically since the end of 2018 after selling off for a long period of time they seem to be purchasing more holdings for their portfolio all right now let's move on to this Argentina now I had so many people commenting wanting me to do a video detailing what's going on in Argentina I was a little bit late on it I don't want to show you all the information over again I'm just going to cover two points from it first of all you can see that right now 
57. I remember covering this when it was a fraction of what it is right now. We are watching the devaluation of this currency. And of course, if you've been on the money GPS for a while, you can see what is going on. The currency is rapidly losing value against the US dollar. And that is very important because everything is priced in US dollars. Here you can see that it has actually somewhat recovered from this, if you want to call it that. It was over 60 and now it is sitting at 57. Personally, if it was me, I would be getting rid of my Argentine pesos and buying up US dollar, buying up anything, I would be doing this for quite some time, kind of a little late for too many people if they don't have real assets or other currencies. I just wanted to show you this. You can see over the last five years what has happened. Take a look over the last year what has happened, but you can just see the devaluation. It's not overnight necessarily, but this kind of thing happens and you think, well, it's going to get better. It's going to get better. I don't want to get rid of my currency now because, you know, this could really change and then I lost all that money. Same like people when they get into stocks, they get afraid to necessarily sell if the stocks came down 10%, if they came down 20%. They don't want to sell. They think, well, I'll just wait till it goes back up, then I'll sell. And then they're 30% down, then they're 40% down. And of course, this happens all the time with people. They do not know when it's time to give up. The president of Argentina finally got a moment of reprieve Thursday after he rolled out a second wave of economic measures while markets recovered a bit following steep losses. They are making some changes right now, and I assume that they're seeing this as positive, even though it might not be positive. Simply the fact that they are acting, that is helping out the market. Well, Macri froze payments on inflation-linked home mortgages until December, eliminated a VAT tax on essential food products, and prepared to freeze gas prices for 90 days. That follows a slew of other measures he rolled out on Wednesday. The peso gained 5% Thursday after plunging earlier in the week while bonds rebounded too. Speaking of Argentine debt, what you are looking at right here is a country that created a century bond that is completely insane to me because this is a country that has gone bankrupt many times. And of course, nobody intends on actually keeping it until the maturity. But the fact that it exists is crazy. Regardless, when you look deeper into this, you see that it has been losing value over time. When they initially brought this out, it was oversubscribed. Even though despite all the weakness about all everything that has been happening basically with Argentina over the years, still, there's so much money flooding towards it. Why? Because there's yield. That's what investors are seeking. And of course, if there's somebody giving it to them, they're going to take it. Risk doesn't matter. In this article here and some charts out of Reuters, I'm going to show you here basically talks about what's going on in Europe right now. The index of the bloc's big banks plunged on Thursday to the level it hit in 2012 at the peak of the Eurozone debt crisis. We have a very big problem that is happening right now. I know a lot of people don't want to hear about it because that's bad news. It's pessimistic. It's negative. It's fear and so on. I don't know about you, but you're here for the truth. That's why I say it at the beginning of every video, even though I get repeated comments, people saying, don't say that line, don't say that line. I want to make it very clear. You're here for the truth. You're not here for entertainment. I'm not a very good speaker. You are here for information, okay? If you want to see some ridiculous theories and nonsensical garbage that's available, even in this niche, there are so many other places to go. That means the banks are worth now what they were when Greece, Ireland, Portugal all needed bailouts. Cyprus ordered its banks to seize some deposits and Spain's banks were saved from collapse only by a government rescue. That's what people need to understand right now. Think about the level at which we are at. Right now, globally, apparently, things are okay. If you look at certain mainstream media, they're saying the growth is robust. They are saying that we have a 
little bit of a problem, but of course, in the next little while, this is going to pick up and things will get better. We have the ECB suggesting that they're going to print money for eternity. We have the Bank of Japan suggesting that they will do the same. We have the Federal Reserve that is beginning a new quantitative easing cycle beginning with cutting rates and of course QE4 or some sort of operation twist or something else along those lines will need to take place. Then the equity purchases of course will happen after that but we'll see that in the next recession. And so today we have a messed up scenario that anybody who's paying attention will see. Though it still hasn't quite matched the bottom of 2008 financial crisis, the index has lost 84% of its value since its peak in 2007. If you tell me that things are okay when an entire index is down 84%, and these are the biggest companies in the world. If you go to any downtown, no matter where you are, big city, go to the downtown, the tallest buildings, nine times out of 10, they are some sort of financial corporation. It's a bank, it's an insurance company, it's some investment company. All of the money goes to these places. They are holding extremely risky, they call them assets, I call them gambling. In their casino, they call a market. And this is what we're looking at right now, 84% down. If it was Amazon stock and it was 84% down, people would be freaking out. They would be lighting themselves on fire. Look at what's happening right here with the European banks. It is now a few points away from hitting levels seen in the 1980s when the euro was barely a dream and some of the countries that now use it were still using Soviet rubles. And it just goes on and on here, okay? I'm not going to read you the entire article, but essentially what we have is a scenario that continues to get worse that the mainstream media does talk about in certain instances, but they always say, don't worry, everything is going to be fine the Japanification of US banks. I want you to look at this at the bottom here. And essentially what we have is the purple line, which is the Euro banks, and the greenish line there is the Japan banks. And what you can see is that it is down significantly over this period. And I mean, even if you exclude the fact that, you know, this really was particularly high during this period, still, we have watched the weakness persist for such a long period of time. One has to wonder what is occurring, all right? Now, looking at the SMP banks, on the other hand, they have gone higher. So if you want to know where the money is flowing, clearly, very clearly, it's going towards the US and that's technology companies and of course that applies in this situation to the banks as well. All right, now we're looking at this chart here. Eurozone banks, one third the size of their US peers. Comparing this right now, just showing you the great divide that has been created from that point where the financial crisis hit, we saw everything tumble down together. And since then, we have watched the Euro banks struggle while the US banks have done better. Now, during the little correction that was happening in the fourth quarter of 2018, we watched the banks coming down significantly. I think Goldman Sachs had something around 40% drop. We watched it occur, but they did recover after that. Eurozone banks could break below 2008 lows. Here you can see that on the chart. And there's nobody in their right mind who could actually tell me that this is okay, that this is strong. Well, you know what? The banks can fail. The banks can have problems, but it's okay because I got my seven shares of Amazon. Speaking of Amazon, we have our friend Warren, the insider Buffett. This is Berkshire Hathaway just showing you the latest 13F, okay? I was going to do a video about this and show you some more highlights about what other hedge funds have been buying, but I'm just going to show you this for now. Looking at the details of the latest 13F, I have a video in my free e-course describing exactly how to find the 13Fs on your own, but just wanted to touch on something right here. You know, Warren Buffett purchased more Amazon shares. You can see it right down at the bottom here. This is Amazon, and essentially he purchased what looks like in terms of shares, 11%. So that's based on what I'm seeing here. 
and the value of which had increased from quarter to quarter. So you're just seeing that as well. Obviously, we've seen what Amazon has done, and Berkshire Hathaway, very late to the party, has been adding on shares. All right, now you can just look through the list if you want to see what else they have been doing. It seems like they didn't buy any more Apple during this period, sticking with the same amount of shares. You could look at it based on uh, percentage terms or the totals. Regardless, if you want to check it out, you can go down the list and see what they bought or sold. Uh, they had a, a few big moves, but essentially just wanted to have a little fun talking about how they bought seven shares of Amazon again. And who wouldn't want to have seven shares of Amazon? All right. Now, if you found the video informative, please hit that thumbs up button. I really do appreciate that. If you want the financial education you were not taught in school, these two books have everything you need. All the details, there will be a link in the description. If you want the audiobook, that's available at themoneygps.com. If you want to know how to sell on Amazon, how to make money, passive income, and actually utilize the system of Amazon properly instead of just buying up shares, well, this course is completely free. I created it for you to learn to actually have the forgotten asset class business. Well, you can get into it. Click on the link in the description. If you're unaware of the situation right now in this video, then absolutely you definitely need to watch it. Click on it and I will see you there.